purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at onpurposely.com. Oh my gosh. I was like, okay, God wants me to do this. And I'm like, I am so not prepared for this. And I just kept praying. And this is so crazy that I'm sitting in the studio right now because I was in the car after I got that email and I was full of self-doubt. And I was like, how am I supposed to do this? And I heard on the radio, Spirit 105.3 say, God doesn't call on the qualified. He qualifies the called. And I was like, okay, God is telling me, Emily, I am equipping you. You can do this. Welcome to the Passion Meets Purpose podcast. My name is Sarah Taylor. This is where we discuss the things that you're naturally good at, your gifts, your talents, your abilities, and then how do you put those on display for the rest of the world? Let's jump in with today's guest. Her name is Emily Hutchinson, and you're in for a pun intended sweet conversation today. Um, Emily, I'm so glad to have you here. Would you do me a favor just for our audience that may not have found your cookbook um, or your shows yet? Give me an introduction, a little bit about who you are, where you're from. Go ahead. I am so honored to be here, Sarah. First of all, um, yes, my name is Emily Hutchinson, and I am a cookbook author. I am a TV cookie competition judge with Hallmark Channel, and I have my own little mini series on an app called Great American Community, and it's with Great American Pure Flix. And so uh, it's called The Sweet Life with Emily, where I share lots of recipes and tips and tricks uh, to bake your life easier. To bake your life easier. This is so good. Well, um, Emily, there's so much depth to your story, right? I think for anyone that just sees the outside, it's like, wow, has life always been sweet and perfect? And she just bakes her little heart away in the kitchen. And yet your story has so much depth that the joy that you have today comes from a place of the Lord really rescuing you out of some of the most difficult circumstances. So do you want to start at the beginning? In fact, can I kind of guide you in that? Start where you found your love for baking. Like, take me back to little girl, Emily. Okay, I, I'm going to do that. If if I can, for just a moment, I'm going to start with some scripture that yes. was put on my heart for just this moment. Mm-hmm. And it is Psalm 34, 8, and it's taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. And I'm going to put that in my apron pocket, and then I'll bring it back out in a minute. And so my story goes back A long time ago, when I was five years old in the kitchen with my grandma baking, and my grandma was so wonderful, and she was such a good teacher. She loved to bake. She taught me how to measure. She taught me how um, we started baking pies and breads. It wasn't just box mix. It was legit baking with my grandma. And so she planted those seeds in my heart, and it was just, I felt so amazing when I was baking with her, and I knew it was a gift that I had, and it came really naturally. My mom even would put bowls like bowls of flour and sugar and and measuring cups so I could measure stuff and like kind of make my own my own things when I was 5 and so I kept baking over the years with my grandma and so much that my family was like what's Emily bringing for Thanksgiving and so it was a really wonderful thing that I just felt so special doing and then sadly we lost my grandma mm-hmm. from cancer when she was when I was 12 excuse me and it was so devastating for me, and and it, she was my baking buddy, and so baking kind of took a temporary back burner, but I didn't stop baking. It was still, you know, a love that I had in my heart that, um, you know, I did on, uh, you know, holidays and things like that. It just wasn't like an everyday thing, mm-hmm. and so I grew into an adulthood, and I had two wonderful, amazing, beautiful children uh, within a relationship that didn't end up working out, and then I met my now husband, Mike. And we fell in love and we wanted to have a baby to solidify our family. And so uh, we got pregnant with our daughter, Jennifer Louise Hutchinson, and she was born on October 31st. And she was the most perfect and beautiful little baby girl. And she was so easy. I was like, this is a trick baby because, you know, I, some babies are cry a lot and some are hard. And she was just so easy. And um So we're going to fast forward to January um, and 2008. I mean, excuse me, January 2009. um, My my oldest daughter and I went in to her room to wake her up like we always did. And um, I knew right away that something was wrong. And I scooped her up and I ran into the kitchen and I screamed for my husband, Mike, and he shot out of the room and I laid her down and I started doing CPR, chest compressions. And... 
um, you know, I kind, I kind of my my Nick and Reese, they were little uh, three and six at the time. And I and I told him, go back to your rooms, go back to your rooms. And, um, you know, I, I was just focused on, on CPR with Jenny. And, you know, I started bargaining with God as I was doing those chest compressions. And, you know, I would have considered myself a Christian at the time. I, I wasn't raised in a Christian home, but we would go to um, Easter and um Church on Christmas or Church on Christmas and Easter, excuse me, and me and my sisters would walk to uh, the vacation Bible school over the summer. So I knew who Jesus was. I knew how to pray, and I knew who to pray to. And I just was begging, please, Lord, I will do anything you want me to do if you don't take her from me. Just please don't take my daughter. And in that moment, I, I remember specifically breathing air into her and I and I started doing the chest compressions and I heard this breath exhale out of her lungs and I was like oh my gosh I was so like I felt like hope and I looked up at my husband and he looked at me with the saddest eyes I've ever seen and and I was like why is he looking at me like that and it had dawned on me that I was press, pressing my own air out of her and that's when the despair sunk in and that's when I came to the realization that my daughter died and the paramedics came in and they, they, you know, despite their best efforts, we lost our daughter that day. And, you know, with that happening, I lost my daughter. My husband lost his daughter. My parents lost their granddaughter. My children lost their sister and my sisters lost their niece and they were about to lose me too. And, I was so broken after I lost her, and I I was so desperate to have her back that I got pregnant right away. And we got pregnant with our son, Mikey, and he is 14 now, and he is incredible. Such a wonderful light for Jesus. And with all these you know, good things happening to me, I still felt a hole in my heart, and I still felt broken, and it was like I was alive, but I was not living, and I was just floating through life, and... Um, I felt really dead inside and I and I kind of masked that and I started drinking and my husband was drinking and um, we were just in the pit of despair, really, really deep. And friends of ours noticed how bad we were struggling and they invited us to church and we accepted the invitation and uh, we went to the Grove Church in Marysville and that day Pastor Nick was speaking and I don't even remember what he was speaking on, but It spoke to me in a way that I felt the Holy Spirit, and I'd never felt the Holy Spirit my whole entire life. It wasn't like the chills you get when you're excited. It was a different feeling that I have never experienced before. And so I I knew it was just amazing. And I stopped drinking. My husband stopped drinking. And it was like a miracle. And we started giving back to the community. Our church does this outreach. Uh, the Grove does I Heart every, sum- every summer. And um, so they'd go and they clean up schools. And we started to find a purpose for our pain. And when you start to find a purpose for your pain, that really fuels you. And so for the first time, I had felt hope that I had never felt before since losing her. And so I was like, man, I feel great. And I, I got, I dusted off my measuring cups and I got back into the kitchen and I started baking and I started uh, decorating buttercream frosted sugar cookies. And I actually made the very first buttercream frosted cookie tutorial on Instagram that went viral. This was before anyone was even making the cookie videos or really making baking videos. And so um, over the years, I started building this this incredible platform and this wonderful community of support, and people loved my work, and they were like, oh, it's so beautiful, you're so talented, wonderful. But I, it wasn't it for me. I was like, there's got to be something more. I, I knew God wanted me to share my story like on a larger scale. So I was like, how can I do that? And so I created my blog, and it's The Hutch Oven, and I shared my story in it. And I remember specifically running my story by some people in my life. And um, someone said, are you sure you want to go full Jesus? And I sat there for a minute, and I was like, I didn't even hesitate. I was like, yes, because 
my story is nothing without him. It my story is full Jesus. And so, uh, you know, and they were like, "Yep, I support you 100%. Do it." And I shared my story and I had so many people reach out to me and say, "You know what? I'm going through this and I heard your story. I literally packed up my children and went down to church that next Sunday or I, you know, I'm struggling with this and I heard your story and I know I can get through this. If you lost your daughter and you're still alive and and living, I can do this. And that gave me so much purpose. I was like, oh my gosh, this is what God has for me. And so I kept praying and I kept praying, God, show me what to do, God, you know, make this bigger for me, you know, so we can, we can shine a light on you, God, like show me what to do. So a week later, I get an email from this lady from a woman's blogger conference. And she was like, you know, I read your story and your platform is amazing. I would love for you to come on and share your story. And I was like, ha, ha, ha. Uh, no, I'm kind of scared to do that. I hadn't spoken in front of women before. I hadn't been on TV yet. I didn't know I, had, I hadn't done podcasts. I, I was like, I am not equipped to do this. I can't do this. So I was like, uh, I'm going to say no. And even though God was telling me to go this way, I went the other way. And that haunted me. And I was like, Lord, I am so sorry. I know that was for me. If you give me something, I'll do it. I will do it. And I'm not even kidding, Sarah. A week later, and you know, I say a week later, and it's like, really? But this is when you know it's God. So a week later, I'm in Safeway, and I'm at the deli aisle with my husband, and I opened my emails. I didn't even know why I opened my emails. But it was an email from Hallmark's Home and Family. And the producer said, we love your work. We'd love to have you on the show. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, okay, God wants me to do this. And I'm like, I am so not prepared for this. And I just kept praying. And this is so crazy that I'm sitting in the studio right now because I was in the car after I got that email and I was full of self-doubt. And I was like, how am I supposed to do this? And I heard on the radio, Spirit 105.3 say, God doesn't call on the qualified. He qualifies the called. And I was like, okay, God is telling me, Emily, I am equipping you. You can do this. And so I went on Hallmark Someone Family and I shared my story. And it was the most beautiful moment because I was able to share on national television. But I also created these relationships with the host, uh, Debbie Matinopoulos. And it was a different host at the time, but then it happened to be Cameron Matheson after that. Um, but sharing my story and being there with them and um, connecting with them has made amazing relationships that I are really strong for me today in my career. Um, and so it's just so incredible, like the blessings that God has given me through that. And then after Home and Family, I wrote uh, a beloved best-selling cookbook, Creative Cookie Decorating, and then I wrote another one that's Creative Cookie Decorating for Everyone. And you're going to love this, Sarah, because it has gluten-free and dairy-free oh. recipes. <laughs> it's really for everyone to bake memories. Mm. And um, so I also, the cool thing that God has also done for me is he has had me travel around the country teaching people how to decorate cookies. I've taught Rachel Ray. I've taught Candace Nelson, the founder of Sprinkles. I've taught Lacey Chabert. I taught Lance Bass. I even shared my story on Lance Bass's podcast. And it, he was so wonderful. And, it, you know, you someone's story is so powerful because you're not preaching to anyone. You're literally just sharing what God has walked you through and what God has delivered you from and, and what he has made you be today. And I and it's really cool too cuz I also get to teach classes with William Sonoma. So I get to kind of teach kids classes too and you know um you know kind of plug myself in there with the kids and stuff like that. And you know my cookies have been on cover of magazines and it's just wild what God can do with cookies. <laughs> and um you know I like I said before I have a series um on the Great American Community app, The Sweet Life with Emily, and it's really really special to me. Um and And so with all that, um, you know, I want to go back to the scripture that I talked about in the beginning. So, you know, Psalms 34, 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. And I want to repeat that because I think it's such a beautiful kind of way to like for me to look at my life because I have tasted and seen literally God's goodness in my life. And I've also have a career that I've had to take refuge in him with. 
I've had to um, pray a lot. I've shed a lot of tears. I've had a lot of doors shut. I've had a lot of no's. Um, but I also have had God with me, and I've been praying through all my decisions. And so when one door closes, my gosh, God opens another. And it's so cool to be a part of. And so, um, you know, I'm kind of in a, a season right now where I'm making – some moves in my career, Sarah, and I feel really underqualified. And so, you know, I have that self-doubt creeping back in and I have like those thoughts of, okay, I know God is telling me to do something and it's a little different. It's kind of the same thing I'm doing, but a little different in a little different way. And it stretched me farther than I've ever been stretched. And so there's been times where I'm like, maybe I shouldn't do this. You know, maybe it's too hard. And I kid you not, for the first time in years, I see all popping up all over the place on Instagram, on Facebook, like through people's words, God doesn't call on the qualified. He qualifies the called. And so that's why I pray through everything that I do, because I know that no matter what path I'm on, if it's God's path, it's the right path. And speaking of the right path, a way that is really helpful for me to stay on that path is reading my Bible. And so I read my Bible a lot because especially, you know, this time in our world and when everything is so, you know, my life is like out there and everyone, everyone can say whatever they want to anyone. Right. And so I want to know what God says about me. I want to listen to his words. And so I read the Bible and uh, it's kind of like we're all like in God's oven, like baking, and, you know, some of us are baking at different temperatures. Some of us are baking at different times. Some of us are rising quicker than others. Some of us have sprinkles. Some of us have chocolate chips. And so like a, a good baker is going to follow a recipe to get a precise result. As a believer, we need to follow the Bible so God can show us who He has created us to be in that oven. And so, again, that brings me back to taste and see that the Lord is good. We're going to be right back to it with our guest. But first, I want to thank Seattle's Union Gospel Mission for sponsoring this podcast. I had the pleasure of going and attending their women's graduation ceremony. It was literally life-changing. I felt like I'd just gone to church. The way that these women supported each other, the hugs, the the shouting out of the graduates from the audience going, that's my sister, you got this, the vulnerability, the transparency, and the program that Seattle's Union Gospel Mission puts on. You know, Seattle's Union Gospel Mission started over 90 years ago by serving soup to homeless and unemployed people during the Great Depression. Today, they've grown to operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They provide 360-degree care to thousands of our homeless neighbors throughout the greater Seattle area. They're motivated by faith and hope, just like you. They want everyone to know that no matter their circumstances, they are loved and cared for by Seattle's Union Gospel Mission, and by God. Their approach is highly relational. Um, a lot of individuals come to their shelters, but they also have teams that go out in the search and rescue vans. It's lasting change. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes patience. There's no quick, easy fixes, but the change is possible. And if you want to find out how you can get involved, take action right now at ugm.org slash take action. We'll also link you up in the show notes. There's plenty of ways to volunteer. So be inspired, volunteer, and give at ugm.org. I love that he even speaks to you in baking analogies. Like, that's so precious to me, right? That, like, he, that's your love language. It's what he talks to you in. Yes. That, yeah, that you see that as well. Yes. Wow. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that testimony with us. I Take me back, for the person listening, mm -hmm. take me back to, well, let's talk a little bit about how you honor Jenny's legacy mm -hmm. and how the Lord continues to meet you in that pain. Yeah. You know, actually, Sarah, this last year, she would have been 16. So this last Halloween was the first milestone that I've walked through. That was really, really, really painful for me. Um, and so I tell you, I am so close with Jesus that I, sometimes I get a little upset and we talk through it and I cry and I think that it's okay 
to get your feelings out and to cry and to grieve when we need to grieve and mourn when we need to mourn. So God can help collect those pieces and he can help put it back together Mm -hmm. because it makes me so much stronger when I can lean on him Mm -hmm. no matter what I'm going through. And to be able to even just be here and share about Jenny and offer people hope, that gives me so much healing and the fact that it is offering healing to other people, that for me is my sole purpose. It really is. That is the reason why I do the Hutch Oven because Sarah, I was a misfit. I was the one that like people counted out and like, look at what God has done, you know? And so I really believe that my purpose is to show people like, hey, you're not counted out. Hey, if you have a dream, like if God's put something on your heart, even if it was, a you know, 20 years ago, Follow that, honor that, see what that could be. And you never know what God's going to do with it. And so God is so faithful and he is so good. And even when I look back to that day when I was bargaining for Jenny's life, I was like, God, I will follow you for the rest of my days if you give her back to me. And he didn't. He said no. And it was the hardest no that any mother could ever have in her whole life. And even with that no, he saved me and I'm following him anyways. Another part of your story that I love is uh, it's not like a one and done situation. So you had that opportunity Mm -hmm. and you felt like you were supposed to say yes, but you chickened out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so you prayed through it and you asked the Lord again. You said, hey, pretty sure I missed that one. Yes. I see what you're doing there. Uh, If it's you, bring it again. Yes. Lord, show me. And boy, did he didn't he? And so I have been faithful to everything that God has asked me to do since because Mm -hmm. he is so good and I want to honor that. And so wherever he puts me, I'm like, all right, Lord, we're doing this. Yeah. Second and third and fourth chances. Yes. And fifth chances. Yes. Yeah. His grace. That's the best part about it is God's grace is so good. And it's like the grace we give to our children, right? Yeah. You know, uh, and God gives that to us. And it's just such a beautiful relationship. So anything else you would say to the person that has been listening and they think that they missed their opportunity? They're too old. They don't have the capital. They don't have the drive. Like they've got that inkling. Is that really the Lord? Is that really what he's calling me to? Like take me deep into some of the prayers that you pray when you're trying to discern if you should say yes or no to a certain opportunity. Yes. I I always start no matter what prayer it is I'm praying, I start by thanking God for whatever opportunity he's presented to me and ask him, God, is this, is this from the Lord? Is this from you? And he always shows me, he always, I always find peace. And if I have an unsure feeling and I pray about that, God, God reveals that to me. I, I will, I will feel like kind of like a panic maybe and be like, okay, this isn't for me. I've had um, meetings with people that maybe didn't align with my beliefs and kind of wanted me to, um, you know, uh, maybe not share about Jesus or um, even, um, you know, kind of want me to stay kind of where I'm at and just kind of do like brand partnerships and stuff. And I'm like, well, I, I believe that God has something more for me. And so I really believe that um, that God has pressed that on my heart. So when I pray, and I'm like, God, show me, show me what you want me to do. He always does. But I always, Sarah, I always, when I'm talking to God, I always just say, Jesus, I trust you. So if you're giving I me, love an, that. if you're giving me an unsure feeling, I trust you. I love that. If you're giving me a good feeling, I trust you. And so I believe that God has anointed me with those feelings and those little like, you know, tingly senses of mm-hmm. saying, you know, no, this is not, this is not right for you. We're going to mm-hmm. hold off for something. And I've been holding off for things for years because mm-hmm. of that. That. And so I think that the hardest part is as a Christian is waiting. And especially if you have a dream in your heart, right, that you want to happen and you want to see come to fruition right now. Yeah. Um, sometimes God's taken a little bit longer and it might be because you have to work out some kink somewhere or yep. it might be because he's stopping you from you know yep. trouble ahead yep. or um, he's preparing you for more. So I really yeah. do, even with the disappointment and even with the, you know, the heartbreak of the closed door, I still say, Lord, I trust you. So good. Thank you, Jesus. I trust you. And so the disappointments are hard, but mm-hmm. 
you know, after the tears go and you stand yeah. back up and you put your armor of God back on, you're like, you know what? God's going to God's going to steamroll me through whatever obstacle he wants me to. And mm-hmm. if he needs me to hang back for a little bit, I'm going to trust him. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. Do you ever write your prayers down? You know what? I used to write my prayers down and now I'm so inspired to start writing them down again because I think that's such a beautiful thing to kind of look back and reflect on the prayers we prayed and what's been answered. And so I have like little bullet points of notes of things that that God has done and incredible things or prayers that I've seen like my kids get answered or yeah. my husband's been answered. And so I, I, I have those, but the specific prayers and that connection with God, I think it would be really beautiful to go back and just reflect on that. Yeah, I mean, I just I I just ask that simply because I I forget <laughs> I forget all the times that he's shown up faithful. Yeah, and um, just some mentors in my own life say that that's been a game changer for them uh, to write it down and oh. to see. Well, I love that. I'm going to take that, Sarah, because I think that's so beautiful. I love that. Maybe someday one of your next books is like a prayer journal book. Oh, wouldn't that be beautiful? Mm -hmm. And you know what's so cool is that in my cookbooks, there's scripture sprinkled throughout. And you know what the crazy thing is, is I've had people buy my books and say they're wonderful, beautiful, great recipes, but I returned it because of the scripture. And you know what? I'm okay with that because I'm okay with the ones that say, holy moly, like I didn't realize the price that you paid and I am so inspired and I like, I can do anything, you know, by reading, reading your story. And so those moments are way more important than the ones that are like, you know, I'm like, that's okay. Maybe it's not for everyone, but maybe you're planting a seed. You never know. How do you know the Lord more after having your worst nightmare become Mm. a reality. How do you know the character of God more than you didn't before? I have such a pure, this is going to get me choked up a little bit. I have such a pure relationship with Jesus because I have suffered so much and everything I went through and every suffer, every tear he has carried and He has been there through it all. Even before I knew him, he was there. My aunt had been praying for me my whole life. And I believe that her prayers, you know, were part of the part of the reason why I got saved. And so prayers are so important. Um, But I just my relationship with Jesus is so strong. I have such a strong faith that like no matter what I go through, I know, I know I'm going to be okay. And so I know at the end of the day, listen, we're, we're, we're preparing for the kingdom of heaven. I get to be with Jenny one day and just holding on to that hope that, you know, God's uh, Jesus, Scott, she's sitting with Jesus right now and she is so proud and she's protecting me and my family and God's got us. And one day I'm going to be sitting up there with her and I'm going to be able to share and talk about all of this. And I mean, she already knows, right? And so I just think that that is what makes Um, such a such a beautiful relationship that I have with Jesus is that um, I really do trust him. And and I really do think he's good even through everything that we went through. I can't wait to someday hear when I meet Jenny as well. um, How many other people arrived in heaven and like knew her through your story? Like the ripple effect of her life and her legacy? I cannot believe you're saying the ripple effect right now. Okay, so I have friends even on social media that are not Jesus followers that call it the Jenny Ripple. And I have friends that are starting to read the Bible, starting to read Jesus Calling app. And they're like, Emily, like... Like, tell us more. Like, tell us about this relationship. And so it's such a beautiful thing. It is a ripple. I just, I have chills all over that you said that. That is so amazing. I'm so glad. Yeah. I You stewarded her story very beautifully. Um, and your vulnerability is your deepest connection point with anybody listening. If you're listening and if this touches you deeply and you want to get a hold of Emily, um, we're going to link up to her social media and her uh, her blog and all the different ways that you can contact her in the show notes below. Do you have any final parting thoughts? You know what? Just 
cling to the Lord and, you know, go back to that scripture, taste and see that the Lord is good. That's what I want to leave you guys with, because all of his goodness and all of his grace, just take refuge in him and you will be blessed. And no matter what you're going through, there is hope. There is hope in the name of Jesus. And and the most beautiful thing is, is that he died for us so that we could be in heaven and have this relationship with him while we're here on earth. And so if you're struggling, if you, if you have things, especially with the holidays coming up, it's really hard. I would say, I would say, open your Bible and I would say, um, start talking to Jesus and see what happens. Thanks so much for being here today on the Passion Meets Purpose podcast. We're going to talk again in two weeks, but in the meantime, if you want to do us a huge favor, obviously you know this by now, if you leave a review, it really helps others to find this podcast. It also helps us to make it better. And then you can contact us anytime at Purposely Podcasts. Until next time, thank you.